I've had this bike that you're looking at here for 26 and a half hours now and I've fallen in love with it. It's a Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR and it is absolutely glorious. I've ridden speed triples quite a lot in the past, but this is the first one I've ridden since Triumph totally revamped the speed triple in 2021. And it is absolutely staggeringly good. It feels like a total transformation from the speed triples that went before. The old bike was good fun and it had loads of grunt, but it was also relatively low tech and quite basic really in lots of ways. Not anymore. The 1160cc inline triple engine in this has plenty of lower end grunt, it's enough for me, but it also keeps ripping on till it's making 177 horsepower. I can actually talk in this video about what it's like at real world fast speeds as I've been a proper jammy sod in the last day or so. Not only did I get lucky enough to have this bike for a couple of days, which is a real treat in itself, but I also got to ride it around Cadwell Park. Not only did I get to ride it around Cabwell Park, but it was Cabwell Park during a private hire session rather than on a track day. So it felt like I had the run of the place for a couple of hours and near enough had Cabwell Park to myself. And the roads to Cabwell Park are also perfect road testing territory. So I feel like I've got a really good handle on this bike now. The electronics package for this bike is light years ahead of what went before. You get four different riding modes. You've got rain, road, sport, and track. And you've also got the chance to program your own bespoke setup in a fifth user defined mode. The engine character changes as you scroll through the riding modes, but so does the suspension. This has got Olin's electronic semi-active suspension and it reacts to the road to give you the best characteristics for the riding mode that you've selected. Sport is stiffer than road, which is harder than rain, and then track is the stiffest setting of all. Got to admit, I was lacking a bit of confidence when I turned up at Cabwell Park. I've barely ridden on track for almost three years now, and recently I felt really out of sorts with the way I've been riding. When I first went out on track, I'd have felt lucky to point at an apex, let alone hit one, but the Triumph gently got me back into the swing of riding properly. Never once did I feel remotely out of shape, and the Pirelli Super Corsa tyres gave me a ridiculous sense of grip. The brakes dug the bike into the floor and scrubbed off speed in no time and the quick shifter made life really easy, especially as it's also got an auto blipper for downshifts. It's the first time I've ever ridden on track with a bike that does that and at first I had to convince myself to use it. Once I did, it was incredible to just hit the brakes and then tap the shifter down through the gears. No need to blip the throttle or even use the clutch. And that just gives you so much more brain space back that you can spend on something else. This bike really looked after me and everything came flooding back and I could start to explore what it can really do. And as well as being great on the track, it's bloody good on the road. In road mode, it's pliable, but still handles well. And then in sport mode, it gets peppy and feels strong. Rain mode does what it does and it might come in useful if you're running low on fuel and don't trust yourself to go steady while you look around for a petrol station. All of this information is displayed on a 5 inch TFT screen that I've got to say is one of the best I've used. Speed, gear and revs are the most prominent with a small icon as well to show you what riding mode you're in. Time of day and ambient temperature also get their own spot in each top corner so they're really easy to pick out as well. There's a fuel gauge around the bottom, but once you get low on fuel, half of the screen is taken up with a warning and a countdown to empty. So you'll only miss that if you've been really, really ignorant. This probably all sounds really gushing about this bike, so I will give a couple of issues that bring it slightly short of perfection. It feels like it wants to stall when pulling away, and it does take a bit of care to avoid that. And really in general, anything under 3000 RPM, the throttle response is a little bit uneven. It's also a pig to get this one into neutral, but that could be just this bike rather than something that applies to all of them. So can I go back to the effusive praise now? Good. The tech goes way beyond the riding modes and on the fly suspension adjustments. There's also cornering ABS, there's keyless ignition, and this time it actually works because the fuel cap is keyless as well. So you just put the transponder in your pocket and get on with things rather than having to fish a key out every time you want to fuel up. There's cruise control, which is handy for giving your wrist to rest because this is actually quite wrist heavy, the riding position for this. So sometimes you might just want to put the cruise control and wiggle some life back into your hands. 
Of course, all of this level of performance, technology, and in my opinion, outright brilliance never comes cheap. At current prices, this bike costs 50 quid shy of 18 grand. And this one that you're looking at here has heated grips and the upgrade red paint scheme as well. So it's another 500 quid, making it 18,455. Yep, that's a lot of money, but this is a special motorcycle. I'm really fortunate and I've ridden a lot of different bikes over the last 21 years for my job. Every so often there's one that you put in the memory banks and you know that one day you're going to look back and go, yeah, that was a bit good. It's been a very memorable couple of days with this bike and this is the sort of bike that I know I'm going to look back at one day and be very, very glad I've ridden. Thanks for watching.